Hey everybody, what's up? Fuller here. Thanks for checking out the channel. In today's uh, video, we're starting a, a mini course, if you will, a video series on sound design and audio implementation for sci-fi VFX. A good friend of mine, Jesse Henning, who is a awesome VFX artist in the AAA gaming industry, uh, has this course on Udemy and he asked me uh, a while ago, hey, you wanna do some sound design for me for this course? And I said, absolutely, yes. Not only because Jesse is a good friend of mine, but he's also an incredible artist. And if you're into VFX and that's something you, you're wanting to learn, he has a course over in Udemy that you can go check out. I'll put a link in my description uh, of, the, of this video uh, to his course. This video series, I thought it'd be cool if uh, I kind of walked you through kind of from the ground up uh, basic music score, audio design, weapons design, some physics based weapons and things like that, how to do all of that inside the Unreal Engine natively using MetaSounds, no middleware or third party software like that. So in this video, I'm not gonna get too deep into the sound creation uh, as far as the audio assets. I'm not gonna talk too much about how I made those or created those because there's a ton of information online about that and a lot of you already know how to do that anyways. Uh, I might talk a little bit about the sound Sounds, but I want this video series to focus mostly on how to implement the sounds, how to take the sounds and put them inside the game, how to um, use them with animations, how to create the underscores, the ambience, the, the timing of the weapons, the all of the cool tools that MetaSounds gives you um, that you don't need middleware for. So we're going to keep this video series focused on that. So if this video series is helpful to you and you learn something, please throw me a comment. Let's connect, like, or subscribe to the channel. That's always very helpful. But for now, let's jump right into the content. Let's look at the overall game. Here's, uh, let's just walk around a little bit. Uh, here's our spawn in. We've got player control here. Walk around. You can hear the score underneath. Super subtle score, just enough to give it a little vibe. We got these ammo pickups. We got lasers. We got shoulder rifle got uh, energy shield, all that stuff. Super cool over here, we got turret hell. And uh, we can talk about that a little later videos. Walking around, we can respawn. We got uh, time dilation if we wanna see stuff in slow motion. And we got a grenade right there, which is super cool. Physics grenade. So, um, that's it. So let's jump in. So basically we're just, you know, it's kind of like a combat training level. Uh, no AI enemies or anything like that. Just audio, just sound. All right, so uh, first of all, like any project, uh, before I started this, Jesse sent me a spreadsheet of all of the sounds that he needed. And I took that spreadsheet and I studied it. Okay, so this is the spreadsheet that uh, Jesse sent me. And uh, it was super well organized. And it basically kind of had uh, the respawn sound. I, I needed uh, sounds here. I needed ammo pickups, laser rifle, alt pickups, plasma blaster, energy shield, pulse grenade, uh, laser turrets, uh, footsteps, all that. So anytime you're working in a, in a pipeline, uh, you're gonna have programmers or effects guys or somebody sending you what they need. And then as I knocked it out, I was able to change, you know, okay, it's done, okay, I need to do that. So it's always good, even if you're working by yourself, to have a spreadsheet, uh, information laid out so you know what you need, so you don't forget. I think with a project like this, the way I like to start is I like to start creating the assets, right? So for before I even got into the sound designing, uh, the uh, technical designing of the meta sounds, I created the assets first. That way, once I had the assets done, I could start implementing them. This wasn't like a million dollar game, so I didn't spend months on this. I spent a couple days compiling sounds, creating sounds. Then once I had what I thought was enough, I got got started uh, building it. One of the things uh, I like to do when creating assets for a game is I like to make a couple different versions of it, but the reality is, uh, depending on the complexity of the sound, uh, the meta sound programming can do a lot for you. You can adjust pitch, you can randomize the pitch, you can randomize the volume and things like that. So even if you only have one or two assets, you can give the impression that there's multiple assets happening. Uh, it also reduces the kind of like the footprint of the game. So we're gonna talk 
talk a little bit about that as we dive in. Uh, but let's look at the respawn effect. Okay, so I wanted to get that cool little blue ring. I wanted to get the particles falling off. Let's watch it in slow time. Cool, so I wanted to get the ring around his feet. I wanted to get the sound of the, uh, kind of like the blue mask taking over his body and then the particles falling off, obviously. With sci-fi sound effects, you want everything to have kind of like a space AG electronic kind of sound. You don't want to go over the top. Um, and then the other thing, if you notice, uh, when you respawn, it alters the pitch, and we'll talk a little bit about that in the meta sound. So organization is really key uh, as projects get bigger and bigger. So you'll see here in sci-fi assets, I've got a score folder, which has the musical elements. We'll talk about that. Then I've got a sound design folder, which has a folder for each of the sounds we're working on. I like to number them so that they're in the order that I want them to be. Uh, plasma gun otherwise would be over here, but I, I started on that first uh, and then here you've got the spawn So let's open up the spawn folder um, Now you'll have when I started I had two sounds. I had this sound And then I had this sound uh, All those sounds are about five to seven layers of audio that I created with my synth or with microphones or whatever. Um, but I decided for this, it might be more powerful if I divided it up into three layers. So what I did is I created three layers. I created layer A, which is the circle. So that's what you see when the blue ring comes around. And it sounds a little different than you just heard because it is the meta sound is uh, pitch randomizing it. Then I have the energy charge, what I call the energy charge, sounds like this. So that's like super space agey, sciency. And then I've got the plasma circle. So that was the um, my version of the blue lines falling off of him. So how are we going to put that together? So I thought instead of putting them all in one sound, which is what these are, I thought let's separate them so that then we can use the meta sound features to create more versions of them. So instead of just having two versions, now because of the three different layers, I can spawn multiple exponential versions of the sound because they're in layers now. So each layer could be pitched differently, timed differently. Um, and that's one of the things to think about when you're sound designing something is how can I get my most bang for the buck? And so that's what we're doing here. We're getting our bang for the buck. So if we open up this meta sound, which is right here, meta sound, uh, I call MS spawn in. I call all my meta sounds MS underscore. And that's pretty standard, I think. So when you go here, you will, let's look at the spawn. So this is the entire spawn sound. And when you hit play, it does all of the meta sound source graphing. Uh, I'm gonna hit it. I'm just gonna hit it two or three times, and that way you can hear the pitch differences in this. So let me just hit it a few times. So you can hear it changing pitch each time. And, and so this is cool because it prevents it from being the same every time. So you always want a little bit of variance in your sound. Otherwise, you get that kind of machine gun effect and it gets to people like um, some. Let's look at this meta sound. So we have on play here, which starts the meta sound. As soon as you hit play, this executes. So whatever this is uh, connected to, it executes. Also, if you're brand new to meta sounds, I wanna encourage you to check out my series on meta sounds 101, which will give you kind of like an intro crash course. If this is the first time you've ever seen a meta sound, might be a little confusing, maybe even a little uh, intimidating, but if you check out my other videos, uh, it'll make a lot more sense. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna trigger uh, this random float between negative one and two. And we're going to connect this to the pitch shift of our first layer. And our first layer is this right here, spawn circle layer A. So this is the sound. Okay. And what it's doing is every time we're triggering the spawn, it is randomizing the pitch all the way from negative one to two, which is, you know, that's a pretty healthy amount of pitch change, but I wanted that. 
the other thing I did is coming off of this node when this is when this node is finished I have it going to uh, you'll see over here the unfinished one of the things about meta sounds is when you start a meta sound you you start the meta sound playing so no matter what's happening inside the meta sound graph the meta sound has to be playing in order for all of the stuff inside the graph to be working because you can do all sorts of randomization sequences trigger delays all that stuff but until the meta sound starts none of that stuff's going to work the drawback is that when you have a meta sound running if it's not doing anything it's using memory whether it's processing audio or not and so there's this node called unfinished and so what this does is this ensures your engine that once the sound is done once you're done using that meta sound it pulls that it stops that meta sound and clears up the memory and that prevents what's called a memory leak otherwise you may have Otherwise, you could every time you spawn, you're spawning these meta sounds one on top of the other. And even though you're not hearing anything, it's using memory, and that's a massive no-no. So um, I put over here, you see, prevent memory leak. So if you watch closely after the sound, so right here, the sound is running. You hear it, and then it's going to stop. So it triggered this, and now it stops. Once that number stops, it means it's been removed from memory. So you want to make sure you do that. Now, I put a delay over here of one second because I wanted to make sure the sound didn't get cut off. I wanted to make sure everything was done and then the sound gets pulled out of memory. So this is just good practice uh, to get into. Any one-off sounds or one-shot sounds, you want to make sure that it pulls itself out of memory. Um, whereas we'll look a little bit later in the ambience and the music score, there is not an unfinish because those sounds continually run throughout the level. Now layer two, and we're coming out of on play, so this is getting triggered at the same time. This is the energy charge. Now anytime you want to see this asset, you can click on this magnifying glass and that pulls you to the asset right here, layer B energy charge. Sounds like that. Now. I don't have any pitch adjusting on here. I could very easily pull this node out and hook this up to here. And then what that would do is that would um, pitch that sound as well, which would give us exponentially more versions. Now that's a super high pitched sound, so it's not gonna have too much effect on it. So I'm just gonna leave that off for now. So we have this layer and this layer playing together. Uh, we'll talk about this mixer in a minute. And then for the third layer, we have the plasma, which is this sound. So that's the plasma dropping off the player. I wanted that to happen a little bit later in the sound. And so what I did is I kept looking at it and timing it. And so what I did is I timed it and I figured out that uh, I want that sound to trigger about a second later. So that's what this delay note is. So layer one gets triggered with a pitch parameter randomization. Layer two gets triggered at the same time without pitch parameter tran uh, transposition. And then layer three gets a trigger delay, which triggers this, but then it waits this amount of time, which is one second. So if you watch, uh, you'll see this node right here. It's going to wait. So it's going to, these are being triggered and then that one. See how that one's a little bit later? Let's watch that again. Boom, there it is. So that's triggering one second later. You could delay that even more. You could put it two seconds. Uh, and so what I wanted to do is I wanted to time that up with the animation itself. Um, now you could sound design the actual animation, but I thought that was overkill for this. Um, I just wanted this meta sound to trigger every time the player spawns. And I'll show you where we put it in a minute. Now let's look at over here, layer one, layer two, layer three. One, another great reason I kept them in layers is because now we're coming off of these meta sounds and we're going into this audio mixer. So we're mixing these three sounds together. And what's cool about this, I could then adjust the sound after I made it. So if I kept all these sounds together in one sound, I wouldn't be able to control it later. But now I can go back and I can listen to it. And I can go, oh, you know what? I want that plasma louder. So I can just come in here and turn up the plasma layer. So now the plasma is super loud, but I don't want that, so let's undo that. Or maybe I want the energy charge louder. Right now it's at about half. Let's change that. Let's crank that. So that's too loud. So you can come in here and kind of adjust it while you're watching it. Or maybe you want the spawn origin to be loud. Let's crank that up. Way too loud. So you can come in here and you can adjust these sounds. The other cool thing is 
if you wanted to get fancy, you could also randomize those volumes. You could set f random floats so every time it triggers, there's a different volume level. So you can see with these three basic sounds, we're not even pulling random audio samples, we're using the same sounds, but with these same sounds, we can randomize them all. And so instead of just having one sound, we can randomize three sounds. You could have nine sounds, 12 sounds, however you want with these randomization parameters. So that's how the spawn sound works. And then let's just look over here and see where we put it. Now, um, one thing you can do, this is kind of a shortcut. Uh, how the heck do I find where this sound is? What, what I decided to do was, on the Wraith player character, where Jesse put the respawn action, um, so there's an input action that selects this respawn. Right here, uh, you see respawn audio. This is where we are triggering that meta sound. We are adding the audio component, the MS spawn in, which is our dude right here. And then um, I've got a volume multiplier of 0.5, so I don't want it too loud, so I set that around half of the default volume. Um, and then I also have, uh, really important, the auto activate. So what happens there is uh, when this respawn audio component uh, spawns, it instantly plays. So every time our player respawns, it triggers this audio. Now this doesn't go anywhere because remember this meta sound, once this meta sound's done playing, it destroys itself inside the meta sound. So then it's gone from memory. And then over here is the um, uh, triggering the spawning effect. Now, one thing, uh, when I was opening this video back up to uh, do some tutorials on it, because I made this a few months ago, um, I was like, crap, where did I put the spawn in? Um, and I want to show you a little trick. Uh, if you're trying to find the logic for, you've already hooked up logic and now you're trying to rem remember where you put it in the game. Did you put it on the animation? Did you put it on the level? Did you put it on the character? One thing you can do is, so I know it's this meta sound. If I right click on this and I go to uh, reference viewer, it's going to show me where that sound is being used. And then boom, check this out. Okay, yeah, so I'm using it right here. I've got the Wraith player character going to the meta sound. So that's how I know, oh, okay, so I, I just need to find the, the Wraith player character. Um, so you can go here and you can find your uh, player character, which is this right here. And then now you know, okay, here's all the, the logic for the Wraith player character. So that is how we do the spawn in. And um, super cool, cool way to start the game. Let's watch it one more time. Trigger happy over here. Okay, so that wraps up our spawn in sound effects meta sound. Uh, and so we're gonna wrap this video up. It got a little bit longer than I was hoping. So we're gonna do the score and the meta sound, uh, how I created the score in the next video. So please like and subscribe and we'll see you in the next video.